I'm Congressman Blum from uh, Northeast Iowa, the first district of Iowa. And I'll, I'll forewarn you, there's, there's a joke embedded in my speech today. So if there's zero laughter, I'll know no one is paying attention to me, okay? <laughs> I may give you a warning, maybe not. Uh, it's an absolute honor and pleasure to be here today uh, to celebrate uh, National Whistleblower Week, uh, where we celebrate those people that had the courage to come forward and expose waste, fraud, and abuse in our federal government. And particularly those whistleblowers that are with, with us today, and I understand there's like 40, 40 of them. Uh, Sharon Watkins, Bradley Birkenfeld, uh, Dr. Tony Savage, and Dr. Fred Whitehurst, uh, amongst the, uh, the others. And I'd like to thank you all, all the whistleblowers, for your courage and your sacrifice. I'd also like to thank my colleagues who uh, have been here or will be here, uh, Senator Grassley, Senator Wyden, and Congresswoman Spear uh, today as well. Being here today reminds me of the last words of my grandfather, which were, is somebody still holding the damn ladder? Hey. <laughs> that was the joke. <laughs> you got it, right? <laughs> I'll tie that to, I'll actually tie that in. We all here in Congress, all of us are here to support and hold the ladder for whistleblowers. And without them, uh, we would be a less uh, efficient and effective government. Uh, when I came to Congress, this is my second term, uh, in January of 2015, uh, two short years ago, uh, just reminds me of the words of Vice President Pence, uh, who told me, he said, Rod, he served in Congress in the House. And he said, Rod, if I went to the doctor, and the doctor told me, uh, Mike, you have two years to live. He said, I'd want those to be in the House of Representatives because it's the longest two years of your life. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I selected to be on the uh, uh, Oversight Committee, OGR Committee. And uh, you, you're probably well aware uh, our, our, uh, our task is to investigate uh, federal government waste, fraud, and abuse. <coughs> Uh, and we rely on many, many sources to expose uh, those things. Often we investigate them. Most of the times we're not, we're not the ones that find it, though. Uh, we, we rely on government reports from the GAO and from the inspector generals who do an amazing job. But there's also a lot that goes under their radars. And we cannot investigate, we cannot investigate that which we don't know about. Correct? It just makes sense. This is why whistleblowers are extremely important to us because they bring to our attention things that are flying typically below the radar. Employees at the VA who falsified waste wait times, great example. Uh, the ATF employees who exposed Fast and Furious, the gun walking scheme, another tremendous example. We all, we all in the federal government and taxpaying citizens owe a large debt of gratitude to our whistleblowers for coming forward. And often, and we're well aware of this, I come from the private sector, whistleblowers are exposed to retaliation. They face retaliation simply for doing the right thing. This retaliation then, of course, creates an environment of fear hidden from the American public and Congress's eyes. And those who retaliate against whistleblowers often, sadly, see little or no repercussions. This, my friends, is totally, totally unacceptable. Yeah. There must be cut, yes. There must, there must be consequences for those who persecute whistleblowers. I'd also like to take this opportunity today to mention uh, the good work that Carolyn Lerner did during her term as special counsel we worked closely with her, got to know her quite well, and she did a marvelous job uh, on behalf of whistleblowers. I'd like to give her a shout out today. Is she here? No? Also, look, I'm looking forward to working with Henry Kerner, who has been nominated as the next special counsel. Uh, we met a few weeks back in my office, and I'm extremely confident uh, Mr. Kerner will continue to lead the office of special counsel, continue to build on their good works, protecting whistleblowers. Uh, my friends, I'm sure you're well aware of this. This year marks the 28th, 28th anniversary of the Whistleblower Protection Act becoming law. 
And thanks to many, the leadership of many folks in this room, we have made so much progress in how we protect and encourage whistleblowers. But we have much more to do, much more to do. As promised to you, I will continue to work extremely hard to make sure that whistleblowers are protected. Let us all remember, let us all leave here today remembering that sunlight is the best disinfectant. I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you to all of our whistleblowers.